Hello students, today we're going to discuss Oedipus Rex by Sophocles. We'll begin with a short overview of the play in case you were unclear on any of the finer points. The play begins uh, when, a, when a plague has descended upon the city of Thebes. Now really the play begins with some action that happens off stage before the play, uh, before the curtain rises, which we call antecedent action. In this case, the antecedent action is that uh, Thebes' previous king, a man named Laius, was uh, off traveling and was murdered uh, on the streets, and it was always unsolved, no one ever knew who did it. And after Laius was murdered, the kingdom of Thebes was left undefended and was attacked by a monster called the Sphinx. You may have heard of the Sphinx before. And so a hero from a neighboring kingdom named uh, Oedipus decides that he will come and try to defeat the Sphinx and help out the people of Thebes. And so Oedipus does, in fact, defeat the Sphinx by solving its riddle. And uh, as he arrives in Thebes as the conquering hero, uh, he meets the previous king's widow named Jocasta. And Oedipus and jo Jocasta fall in love and get married. So by marrying the queen of Thebes, Oedipus becomes the new king of Thebes. Uh, and and that, it's at that point that the play begins because now a plague has descended on Thebes and no one is quite sure how to solve it. So as many kings would during this time when there is a serious problem in their kingdom, Oedipus calls the oracle or the seer or wise man to help him. Um, the wise man's name is Tiresias and he comes to Oedipus and tells Oedipus that to cure the plague, he must find Laius's murderer. And Oedipus says, well, how can I do that? How can I find the man? And the oracle tells Oedipus, you were the murderer of King Laius. Uh, and Oedipus says, no way. There's no way I could have murdered him. I've never even met the man. I certainly didn't, didn't kill him. Um, so they dismiss the oracle, and Oedipus and Jocasta talk amongst themselves, and Oedipus uh, says, you know, oracles don't know anything. In fact, one time an oracle made a prophecy that I would kill my own father and marry my mother. And to prevent that from happening, Oedipus says, um, as soon as I heard this prophecy, I left my uh, home kingdom, I left my parents and ran away, and I ran here, I ran to Thebes, and that's when I killed the Sphinx. Uh, and during the course of, the, of Oedipus Rex, Oedipus's adoptive father, we learn, uh, dies of natural causes like a heart attack or old age. And so Oedipus says, there's no way oracles can know what they're talking about because my father died from natural causes. Uh, at this point, Jocasta agrees and she says, yeah, there's no way that oracles could really exist because an oracle once prophesied to me that my first son uh, with Laius would, uh, would come up and grow up and kill Laius and marry me. And to prevent that from happening, when we had our, our son, our baby, we pinned his feet together and basically threw him into the wilderness. We had a servant throw him into the wilderness to die, so there's no way that he could have killed Laius and married me. Now at this point, both Oedipus and Jocasta are looking at each other going, uh, okay, so they both of their stories sound a little bit familiar to each other. Um, <clears throat> and, and now, uh, and Jocasta says, that, you know, there's no way that that uh, Laius, my husband, was killed by you because uh, he was killed by a, a bandit at the place where three roads meet. Now, at this point, Oedipus realizes the truth that uh, he had, in fact, accidentally killed a man on his way into the kingdom, and it so happens that that man was the king. So now all that's left is for Oedipus to figure out uh, if he was, in fact, the king's son. And it turns out that instead of throwing their baby to die, Jocasta and Laius's baby to die, the messenger uh, pinned his feet together but then gave him to this shepherd, thinking, oh, that shepherd will take care of him. And that shepherd gave uh, the baby with his feet pinned together to a new shepherd. Uh, and that, sh that shepherd happened to uh, know the king and queen in the neighboring kingdom and then gave Oedipus, uh, this baby Oedipus, to this king and queen to raise. So Oedipus was, in fact the son of Laius and Jocasta, and so he did, in fact, kill his father and marry his mother, uh, and then fathered children with his own mother. After the facts are revealed, Jocasta kills herself, and then Oedipus blinds himself with some pins from her dress. Okay, so let's talk about the play and analyze it a little bit. So Oedipus is a traditional tragic hero. Um, let's talk about some of the features that make him a tragic hero. First of all, tragic heroes are always 
highly placed in society. So they're going to be princes or kings or dukes. And this is so that they have a lot to lose. So the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Oedipus was the, already the prince of a neighboring kingdom and then becomes the king of Thebes. And at the beginning of the play is, in fact, a well-loved king because everybody loves that he defeated the Sphinx and saved them from this terrible monster. Uh, so Oedipus is highly placed. He has a beautiful wife. He has beautiful children. So he has a lot to lose. Next, Oedipus is a proud and arrogant man. We know this because when the prophet comes to Oedipus uh, and tells him, you know, you're going to kill your father and marry your mother, uh, <clears throat> Oedipus thinks that he can outsmart that prophet. He thinks that by running away from his home, he can outsmart fate, more or less. Uh, furthermore, when Oedipus's brother-in-law, Creon, brings the, the seer, the oracle, to Oedipus, and the oracle says, Oedipus, you're the guy who killed the king. Oedipus, instead of taking responsibility, uh, blames his brother Creon, uh, and he accuses Creon of trying to overthrow him with this prophecy. So he's very arrogant. He believes he can outsmart fate, and he believes he can accuse others and, and blame things on others. Finally, he does what, what many tragic heroes do, which is that he causes his own fate, his own death, by trying to dodge it. So again, uh, by trying to dodge killing his father or marrying his mother, he runs away from his home into Thebes and thereby on the road to Thebes kills his father and then meets Jocasta and marries her. So uh, he, in a way, he causes his own downfall. And we call this dramatic irony. So in those ways, Oedipus is a very traditional, Greek tragic hero. Next, let's talk about how the play itself uh, is a traditional Greek tragedy. So, first of all, it abides by the rules of tragedy in that it uses the unity of time and place. So, that means that uh, the, the whole play uh, only takes place over a single day. So, that would be the unity of time. On page 16, Tiresias says, This day shall give you birth and death in one. Uh, and, and by that he means uh, that in, in one single day uh, you'll realize your birth, meaning who you were born from, who your parents are, and death. Uh, it also basically dooms Oedipus at the end. Uh, and of course his wife dies. Um, in terms of unity of place, the whole play takes place right outside the doors of the kingdom, so sort of on the kingdom steps. That's a traditional place where the townspeople would have gathered, where the king would have made decrees, and so on and so forth. So the play does use unity of time and place. Secondly, the play makes use of irony. We've already talked a little bit about irony, so uh, Oedipus's deeds have the opposite of the desired effect, right? So by trying to dodge his fate, he ends up causing his fate. Oedipus also says several things that have the opposite of desired effect. So at one point on page, pages 9 and 10, Oedipus says, uh, he's talking about the, the man who killed Laius and caused the plague before he knows it was him. He says, all men from their houses banish him, since it is he contaminates us all. And on the guilty head, I imprecate that whether by himself he has lain convert or joined with others, Without happiness, evil and evil, he may pine and die. So Oedipus says, um, I basically curse this killer, whoever he is, um, that he should die without happiness and suffer. And then Oedipus says, for myself, I pray, if within my knowledge he could become an inmate of my dwelling, that I may suffer all I invoked. So Oedipus says, if I find out that this guy was an, was an inmate of my dwelling, meaning he was somebody in my house under my roof, I hope that I suffer all the mean stuff I just said happens to him. And in fact, we know that Oedipus himself is the killer, so he basically is making a prophecy about himself. He just doesn't know it's him yet. So again, we would call this irony. Next, the play includes hubris, which is tragic pride. So again, Oedipus accuses everyone of wrongdoing but cannot see it in himself, which is a, is a feature of tragic pride or hubris. The oracle Tiresias says on page 13, uh, My offense you censure, but your own at home you see not, and yet you blame me. So Tiresias says, you're willing to point the finger at me and accuse me of being a liar, but you can't look inside your own home and see um, how you have committed offenses against the kingdom.
Finally, the play includes a moment of anagnoresis, which is the moment that the tragic hero realizes that everything that's gone wrong is his own fault. And of course, at the end of the play, Oedipus and Jocasta both have that moment where they realize that they, by trying to avoid their fates, have actually caused their fates to be fulfilled. We'll finish by talking about the symbolism used in Oedipus and its legacy. The main symbol in Oedipus is this idea of blindness versus sight. So, of course, uh, one of the main characters in Oedipus is Tiresias, who was an oracle. And like many oracles in that time, he was a blind man. Um, and blindness, they believed in ancient Greece, actually sometimes gave people wisdom. So by getting rid of your earthly sight, you could have a kind of extra... Um, uh, site that where you could see people's souls and people's fates and people's futures. So by uh, by being blind, the oracle actually has better sight than anyone. And of course, Oedipus, who has perfect sight, can't see what's right under his nose, that he himself is a killer. Um, so we have this idea of pride making Oedipus blind and, and humbleness and humility making Tiresias, the oracle, be able to see. So we have a reversal of sight and blindness. The main legacy of Oedipus Rex, and one of the reasons that we still study it today, is something called the Oedipus Complex. Now this, this phrase wasn't uh, coined until thousands of years later when a German psychiatrist named Sigmund Freud coined the term Oedipus Complex. And he coined this term because Freud believed that subconsciously every man had a secret desire, whether or not he even knew it himself, he had a desire to kind of kill or overcome his father and then sleep with his mother. And so Freud believed that Oedipus wasn't, it wasn't just accidental that Oedipus happened to kill his dad on the road and marry his mom, but in fact it was a fulfillment of his sort of secret subconscious wishes. And Jocasta, Oedipus's wife and mother, uh, kind of confirms this theory in the play on page 36. She says, um, that maternal wedding, mean marrying your mother, that maternal wedding, uh, have you no fear? For many men ere now have dreamed as much. So Jocasta says, uh, don't worry if you've thought about marrying your mom. Lots of guys think about that, uh, and it's no big deal. So Jocasta actually confirms this theory of Freud's that, that all men have this desire to kill their fathers and sleep with their mothers, and you may agree or disagree. So I hope you enjoyed reading Oedipus and that this analysis gave you some further insight into the play. As always, email me if you have further questions.